In 2003, a small startup had a colossal vision to let people talk for free over the internet. But how? Let's explore how a team of three devs created a solution and look at their challenges they faced along the way. Their first initial challenge was to provide a scalable, reliable service that could handle millions of simultaneous users without requiring expensive servers. Their innovative solution was to use peer-to-peer -peer technology, where connections were made directly between users' computers, allowing it to scale rapidly without the need of massive centralized infrastructure. Here, each peer-to-peer -peer is both a client and a server. This peer-to-peer -peer model distributed the load across the network, significantly reducing costs and improving scalability. As Skype grew, it encountered issues with the network address translation and firewalls, which blocked direct connections between users, since they used hole-punching techniques to establish connections between users. As a solution, Skype introduced supernodes, powerful user computers, and relay nodes to facilitate connections between users behind NATs and firewalls. Essentially, users with open internet connections and more resources like bandwidth and processing power acted as relay points for other users' calls. And for the most part, Skype calls were really clear and it helped keep the company's bandwidth bills down. At the start of 2006, they introduced peer-to-peer -peer video calls that acted the same way. To manage varying internet speeds and maintain call quality, Skype dynamically adjusted the video quality, meaning they would reduce the call quality if someone's connection was bad. I know some of you guys remember that. They also encrypted the data streams and had a fallback mechanism to keep calls with bad connections up and by the end of the year they had 100 million users registered worldwide. While the peer-to-peer -peer model offered scalability and cost efficiency, it also had challenges such as reliance on users' hardware, potential security vulnerabilities, and inconsistencies in call quality due to varying internet connections. Then they had to make an app for Skype, it got tricky and they sold to Microsoft and transitioned to the cloud. Today, we are all so spoiled with our video and audio calls, we need to take time to remember what started it all.